It could just Your be. Place confuses me. It a could lot. just yeah. be out of bulb. Like no, yeah. it's not. <laughs> it's not bulb. Have you replaced the bulb? Yes, I've replaced the bulb. It's something to do with the switch. Uh, <laughs> weird. Did you put a Bluetooth bulb in it? <laughs> no. Okay, just check in. And they're Wi-Fi bulbs, not Bluetooth bulbs. I don't give oh, a shit. Jesus Christ. I don't. With that I being don't said, buy guys. Those. Welcome back to Should another episode of What You Take, the show where we talk about just about anything we can possibly think of and bring you guys along for the unfiltered, unapologetic ride. As always, you're going to have myself here, Steve, my brother Chris. Hi. How are you doing? I'm full of joy and pep. I was told I should be more people friendly. This is an attempt at that. Spencer, how are you doing? Sexy Spence. I don't like that. That was uh, creepy as yeah. fuck. No, it's like one of those where like, oh, someone didn't quite level out your drugs right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what the fuck that was. I'm medicated. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel sad. Like, <laughs> just one tear. Like, uh, fucking hey, man. I fucking love it. Mm. So, guys, I got a couple of things I wanted to run past you here. It's a little bit of a catch up from some of the projects that we've been seeing going on with like movies, upcoming movies, You're rumors, right. all that other kind of fun stuff like that. Um, so, but before we get to that, Chris is going to talk to you guys about W. Hi guys. It's me again. W energy has got a nice clean energy. It gets you nice and elevated to a state of mental awareness that you're able to complete your day to day task. Uh, There's also no horrible burnout. No regretting your life at the end of it. Just like me and Red Bull and monster monster too. I'm real addicted to both of those, but it's real nice, real clean, real easy to make. You just fill up one of your bottles with water at about what? Two scoops, Steven? One scoop. One scoop. One scoop. Don't do two scoops. You might not be able to handle two scoops. One scoop. And you just give it a nice little shake. These things come in a gr- bunch of different great flavors. And I'm sure my wonderful uh, friend over there, Steven and brother knows many more of these flavors, but this is the galaxy grenade. And it's what I've been rocking all day. Keeps me nice and light and aloof and ready to do these W energy ads all day long but you know yeah check it out for yourself you know you really got to try it for yourself don't just take my word for it go to w. w.gg and order now with our order code what you take 10 save 10 percent off your order it comes in a little uh bucket just like protein powder give it a shot keep you going yeah. So, first thing I want to confirm, Spence, you brought this to us here, and we don't know exactly to what capacity or anything like that, but Henry Cavill. Yes. Wolverine. Yes. How are we feeling about that? I love it. Do you? I do. Talk to me about it. All right. Now, so, I know, okay, here's the thing. I just love Henry Cavill. I mean, that's, that's a fair statement. Like, he's, he's too good looking, first off. As a straight man, too good looking. It's not fair. But the thing that gets me about that is, like, I think it'll work because of how good of an actor he can be. But to me, he technically doesn't encompass anything that's Wolverine. Like Wolverine's like five, three and a hairy brutish guy. Right. Or Henry Cavill looks like Prince charming. I'm like, pretty sure her, uh, Henry can get fucking grimy and hairy. Well, yeah, we get that from the Witcher, but like mm. he's still supposed to be like a short grunty Brick house. Well, you just gotta fuck around with some camera angles like they did to Elijah Wood. I would just make him seem smaller yeah. than he is. I mean, I guess it's just... I feel like we can find a short Canadian somewhere. If only there was one that we knew of. Is Kevin Hart a Canadian? <laughs> no, I was joking about Ryan Reynolds, but he's, he's already dead. He's also like 6'2". Is he? Yeah. Ryan Reynolds also, I don't think, could be vicious enough to even be conceivable as yeah. Wolverine. Mm. Like, I just, 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 just that's a whole face lot of to know. Too... So what we know about it is he's going to be a Wolverine variant right. in the upcoming Deadpool and Wolverine film. What's yet to be figured out is if he's just going to be one of many cameos for that's um, zoning in as different variants in this film, or right. if he's going to be heading the mantle moving forward as Wolverine. I think as a as a cameo, I think it works just fine. I don't know that long term I would want to see Cavill be be Wolverine. No, that's I guess yeah, as like a variant, I suppose it is kind of nice. Like I don't know, I, guess I just I'm happy he's there. Like right. Right, right, that's right. where I'm at, but like I still don't know who would be a good replacement for Wolverine. That like, might be, that might honestly be one of those that they just kind of let it die when Jackman's done with I it for a while. I hope so actually. Like yeah. Maybe when I'm, like, 50, yeah, cool. I'll be like, hey, back in my day, it was Hugh Jackman. Correct. It's only 15 years away. Yeah. 
It's only 20 for you. 22. 22. It's right around the corner. You're going to blink and you're going to be ancient. I know. Half a century. 50 years. 50, five decades. 50 winters. 50. Yeah. Why is it that when you say it like that, it seems even shorter? Yeah. Anyway, but so so that's Wolverine. I don't know where to take. Why why did she bring that up like that? I don't know. It's so it's so weird. Mortality. Are we just getting? It's ironic that we're talking about Wolverine, who's yeah. immortal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, close thing to. Oh, if he didn't get the. If he didn't adamantium. Get, yeah. I still think it was the GMOs that were doing it to him more than the adamantium. I think it was both. I don't know. I definitely think it was a combo factor. I just think the adamantium is what killed him faster, whereas like before he would have just aged more human. That's, yeah. I guess. So, yeah, I guess both. But anyway, sorry, Henry Cavill. Oh, you're good. Love so, that guy. The the other the other rumor actually deviates away from that and goes more into the, the DC realm again. We've talked previously that the, we would love to see Batman being portrayed as Jason Ackles or through Jason Ackles. Jensen. Um, Jensen, sorry. What did I say? Jason. Jason. Jensen. I was thinking of fucking Red Hood. Um, and then also Al Rickman. Okay. So, no. No. What is his last name? Why am I fucking up actors? Alan actors? Rickman's been dead for a minute. Yeah, that was the name. <laughs> Who the fuck am I thinking of? Uh, the Reacher guy. Alan Ritchie? His name isn't Richie. I think so. It's not Richie. I know that. It it's Alan. Fast. Look it up for me real quick. Anyway, Got there's this. another name in the ring that has confirmed that they would be honored to play Batman. Jake Gyllenhaal. Mm. Nah. No. It's a pass. I'm trying to picture it. Like I'm picturing the chin. Like it's there, but it's just not there. No. You you would end up with a with a Christian Bale kind of Batman. Right. If he were to go that route. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Alan Richinson. Richinson. Mm. Okay. I knew I knew it was the the riff feeling, but yeah no I don't know, uh, Jensen Ackles though I'm sorry he, Ackles is uh, Alec Ackles is always going to be my first pick as far as right. Batman goes. That's my thing. It's I would have doubted it till I saw him in the boys and seeing right. how he did as boy soldier soldier boy soldier, soldier boy. boy. How's close? What what becomes increasingly more clear with Gyllenhaal's name being put in the ring now though is it does seem like they are wanting to go the route of the thinner Batman. You right. look at Christian Bale, you look at um, Pat Bat, we look at Jensen being in the ring, now we look at Jake being in the ring. It seems like the big broody one is maybe not necessarily the direction that they're going to go. Right. Like, dude, looking at Ben Affleck when he was Batman, yep. like, dude, dude was a shit brick house. He really like, was. Though. He was a big boy. That's the thing. I I, I would prefer Alan Richardson to, to take it because... I just want to see Batman kick the unloving dude, fuck out of people. I'm not going to lie. I guess that dude is just so big. It almost doesn't seem fair. He's so good at violence. He is like, it's is that the calm demeanor of just death. Yeah. Like I want to see him fucking put his foot in somebody's chest and send him across a yeah, fucking cause warehouse. You will see that. Yeah. But like, here's or like my pick thing. him by the shirt. No, I guess, like... I guess with my thing is like, you look at Batman and he's always like the height of the criminals. He's not like some six eight behemoth of a man that just <laughs> that's Bane. That's what Bane's there for. Do Batman's you, a do detective. Do you think Alan Richardson could play Bane? No. Comics Bane. No. 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 I'm gonna have to kind of agree with that. Actually, it's just because like Bane is comically huge. Like, mm -hmm. whereas like I feel like that's he's just a big dude. That's like he looked like the brute in one of like the Joker's henchmen. Mm. Yeah, because at that point the only other alternative is you start to look at what they did with Tom Hardy's Bane, and you'd basically just get a beefier version of that. Mm. And just, there's no CGI Bane or bust. Th there's no, but that's just it. They need to not do it. DC needs to stay away from CGI. Mm. Like God help them, they that need to God stay away awful. from CGI. Like remember when they did the Henry Cavill with that mustache? Yeah, that was, was bad. In the contract that Mission Impossible. Mm. Yeah, it, it, that, that whole thing needs to just not be a How thing. How are they so bad at it though? Budgets. They try and cut the corners with it. I get the, the one thing you shouldn't cut. Corners Correct. With. Oh, I absolutely agree. Now, something else I did want to talk about because we really didn't get to talk about it a ton. The last time that we discussed this, because the video never aired for it, was the discussion around a Batman Beyond animated project in the in the style of Spider Man in the multi. In the I heard it got Spider canceled. Oh, it did get canceled. Yeah. Yeah. When did it get canned? 
Ah, uh, recently. Yeah, it was like a few. Weeks it was a ago. concept art that they wanted to do, and there oh, were for some sure. serious talks about it, but they decided not to greenlight it, which is Damn. unfortunate. Because to me, that animation style with that bat. Oh my god, that would have been beautiful. Get, get Shia LaBeouf in here. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> Fucking do it. You know, no, yeah, I mean you're absolutely right. That that universe with that animation style would have been a it perfect been... fucking match. <sighs> Dude, it's it's just a beautiful animation style. Yeah. Like especially with a character that is supposed to be as nimble as like Batman Beyond or Spider-Man, right. it works specifically well, I think. Well, just seeing like even just the old cartoons where he was like steaming through like the a- or like like running through the alleyways and like flying and stuff. It's just I don't know. I guess it's kind of a waste to me that they're skipping out on that cuz like concept art was just gorgeous no i totally agree but i don't know it's always kind of interesting seeing that kind of stuff i am interested to see speaking of kind of backpedaling a little bit speaking of deadpool wolverine i'm i keep hearing about all of these different variants that are going to show up and these different time timelines that they're going to visit to clean things up and so on and so forth like that and I'm really become curious as to if this is going to have a serious plot to it. Yeah. Or if this is going to accidentally become the pinnacle of the multiverse issue that Marvel has had, where they're just going to time hop all over the place. It's going to be fun and quirky because it's Wolverine and Deadpool. Yeah. But it's not going to actually do anything. I really wish what do you, they Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I kind of wish what they would have done with Deadpool a lot more was like, you know how they have the Easter eggs and the cameos and all this? I would have loved to see Deadpool popping around and bear, like just no out of nowhere. Almost like Deadpool take over for Stan Lee right, when he did his cameos. Exactly. Like, you know, there's like Deadpool eating a chimichanga or reading a comic book when the Hulk goes flying by or something. You know, just little fun things like that. Yeah. Because that's like his character. Yep. yep. Have him pop in as the post credits guy all the time. Yeah. You're like, hey, hey, don't get up yet. There's another scene coming. And then just have him like walk away from the screen. Right. Like, I think one of my favorites was my favorite cameo that was with Stan Lee in the library where he was just listening to music and Spider Man was fighting Lizard Man. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I love all the Stan Lee cameos. Oh, dude. They were, they were a highlight of Marvel movies for me. They were, and that was everything that led up to pre-Infinity War. Mm-hmm. I mean, right. like, I don't know, that whole thing. Did well, Stan then, Lee live to see Infinity War? I don't know. I'm sure he saw it. Mm. That's it. That was my no, only no, no, question. Just, now I'm kind of wondering when Stan Lee died. <laughs> it, it, it well, was... and then, I mean, speaking of Stan Lee, they have all of the Spider-Man movies now. We're getting re-released to the theaters. All, like, eight of them, I think. Oh, really? Are, are going back. Uh, the Toby ones, the couple that Garfield did. I've been seeing a bit of... I've noticed it with Critical Role. This is a bit of a side tangent, but it relates to theaters. I've been seeing a number of, like, shows like that actually rent out movie theaters to do like live shows and stuff like that oh yeah and i'm like that's actually really neat that they're like incorporating the two mediums together with like how we've talked about how like youtube has kind of become like tv at this point and you know things like that that's it it was just a little sidebar so stan lee died in november 2018 and the movie k and endgame came out in like april 2019 oh well no it came out oh but he definitely he probably got an early peek at it yeah and if he didn't get the final product you imagine that he would have seen he was probably the there, majority right, of right like he was there for the editing here's the thing i don't think movies like that are like they don't enjoy it quite like we do i guess to them it's like a, the work and effort that went into it it's not so much the entertainment right see i don't know i mean it, it I think it could be the the flip side of that though too. Like you put all that work and everything into it, and then when you do see the final product, yeah, I think you are entertained to see how. Because you got to remember, I think there's there's a lot of times with actors that you see though too, where they're like, I didn't know how the final thing was gonna play out because we shot five versions of this scene. But right. then what people have often they shoot out of order sometimes too. They shoot out of order, and they're not on set when everything else is done. Yeah. So they may understand how the how the film is starting and ultimately how it ends, but they may not know all of the nitty gritty. I guess in my viewpoint though, it's just like seeing behind the scenes of everything. Yeah. It's got to be weird. It's got to throw you out of the magic. That's oh, I my imagine. thing. Like. So I don't know. It's like, oh, hey, I remember when you stubbed your toe when you kicked that right. helmet. You know, like <laughs> that was funny. Go, why does everyone go back to Vigo? I have no idea. It's just it's my a, go-to. Vigo's a fucking legend. But no, it's, it's, it's funny that you said that because the thing that came into my head was the example of like when when Boromir was it Boromir 
when Boromir had died. Yeah. It was like, everyone knew that Boromir died, but maybe some of the actors didn't know how he died or something. Right. Like, it was like, my example went to Lord of the Rings also, which I just <laughs> thought was funny. I, I love, my favorite on the set scene, or on the set fact about Lord of the Rings is, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but the dude who plays Gimli was apparently notorious for just beating the fuck out of extras. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The stunt men would run at him, and they're like, pretend to swing, and he just starts smacking yeah, them. Yeah, and, like, they were afraid to run at him and shit like that, because, well, that's the thing is, like, a lot of them had, like, blunted weapons and things yeah. like that, but, like, Gimli's axe was full weight. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, they ended up doing that with um, the the Rohirian girl towards the end, because her fake strikes were looking too fake. Yeah. So they, they said, like, hit him. Like just, ju- actually just hit him. Hit him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember who it was. Um, I don't know if it was Star Wars or another. It was another film franchise where they actually no, it might have been Matt Damon. Now that I'm thinking about it, with the the Bourne movies. Yeah, where he worked with this specific stunt guy for like forever, and they had this agreement because he was a self admittedly just horrible with fake fighting and yeah. he would always end up clocking someone. And so he made a deal with all of his stunt people like, Hey, if I ever actually punch you, I'm going to buy you a really nice bottle or a case of champagne or something like that. And they were all about it. Like whatever. And then he started working with this one French. <laughs> Either way you're punching me. Right. Like... And then, um, he started working with this one guy and he went to make him the deal. And he's like, Matt, how about you just don't fucking hit me, please. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, fuck you and your champagne. Just don't fucking hit me. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's something I I thought would be a fun career too, is being a stunt man. But see, I want to say yes, but like I always hear the horror stories of what goes on behind the stunts. Like Harry Potter stunt double paralyzed from the neck down. Yeah. Like oh my god, I heard about that. that was a bad one. Yeah, like there's in so our many... Harry Potter or the yeah. one they're working no, on. No, the our Harry Potter. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> As a stuntman get hurt a lot. There was like, well, and then you talk about the guys who do their own stunts. I mean, Jason Statham. I think he did one for Transporter, or um, it might have been Expendables, yeah. where he was like driving a car off a cliff or something, yeah. and he couldn't get out of the fucking car. Right, and it was like because in that in those movies, you you send the fucking car. Yeah. So he was like maybe another five feet, and I was going with that car. Yeah. And I just you think about that shit, and you're like, what the fuck, dude? Oh my god. Like, did you ever see those, like, 1920s, like, where they didn't have, like, the safety precautions, and you saw those, like, funny black and white ones, like, oh, the front of the church fell, and the guy standing in the doorway? Mm. Someone had to measure that and be like, all right, where can Bill stand? Yeah. Right, like, and you then, stand there, and well, how good are you with math? And, and then like, you just kind of hope that the measurements are right. Well, yeah, right. that's the thing. That's a bit of a wild ask. <laughs> right. Like, hey, stand here. Don't fucking move. Don't sneeze. Don't breathe. Yeah. Don't even fucking if you, pray. If dude. you move wrong, you'll die. Do there you was trust one me? I saw where like the dude was riding in the front of a train. Yes, I love yes. that one. That was a train. That was a real thing. That was yeah. yeah. No CGI. If you would have tripped, dead, dead, instantly, just done, gone. Oh God, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's it. Yeah. Are those guys who fall and they're. What they fall on is just boxes. Have you seen the guys on the beach that, like, do their training for death? Like, the, have you seen these fuckers I don't before? Think so, Oh, man. my God. Now, there's this video of this kid. He was a, a stunt double of some kind, and he was working for – he was practicing stunts for just, like, dying. Like, getting shot and yeah. whatnot. And how, like – so, you get shot, and you're just, 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 just full flop, right? Yeah. And you're not supposed to really – brace yourself or anything like that yeah you're supposed to fall like a wet noodle so dude is like you know full running or whatever and like you see him like you know warp his head or something like he gets hit and he just drops oh shit and all of the different ways that he's just letting his body drop on the sand i watched this the first couple i'm like ow yeah you're <laughs> just, <laughs> just... the benefit of when you really ow. get shot is you don't feel that after <laughs> he had a couple where he was like jumping or like you know diving for something and then getting shot and he's just like and I'm like, ow! <laughs> In the middle of doing a jump and just drops. Like, I'll dude, have to I don't find know. I this for you guys. Oh my god, it's fucking nuts. No, I just remember, like, dude, some of the ta- like, the thing is, these guys know how to fall to not hurt themselves. Yeah. Well, like, who else do you know that can get thrown down a flight of stairs and walk away fine? 
You know, honestly, being a stuntman would be a great profession in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> like, hmm, shitty building gutters. That's an alley. There are some boxes. <laughs> I mean, my question is... I know like, what to do. <laughs> do you not get hurt, or do you just stop caring after a while? Like, I, you, you build up a degree like, of a callisk. Both, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think you both. Get, you get a higher pain factor than most people, but I'm sure you get bruises. Like, Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. If you don't get undressed at the end of the night and are just covered in bruises, did you really go to right. work that day? Well, my biggest thing, too, is like, it's not like they they can't be breaking bones. That would be dumb. But, yeah. like, they're Some definitely, these fuckers like, do, man. I mean. I mean, I guess. It's just you can't do that and keep that as your profession. Right. right? But, like, you know, I've seen it, too, where it's, like, jumping through glass. I mean, not real glass, obviously. Sugar but glass, yeah. Yeah, even the sugar glass, though, that's still hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. You're still dropping on it. Like Sugar glass is kind of fun to play with. I've done that a few yeah. times. It's, it's, it's kind of fun. Well, it's cool because it like breaks apart and it looks like real glass, but nothing's sharp. Right. Yeah. But sharp, sharp. But. Right. I, I mean, know. it's just I mean, even like the breakaway like sync. So like the back to the Bourne movies. There's the I think it was the Bourne supremacy, where Jason Bourne's fighting that assailant and they're like hopping in and out of like all the <laughs> different condos and stuff. Yeah. And he takes the dude's head and straight through a porcelain sink. It's like, listen, I know it's a breakaway sink. He knows it's a breakaway sink. But, like, at what point do you tell the guy, like, hey, do you like champagne? Because, like, <laughs> if if it is porcelain and it's just, like, pre-broke, like, you're still hitting porcelain. It's hurt, man. Yeah. Something's keeping that together, and that amount of force is now going to be into your face. Like, and even if it's a pull-away, like, if it's someone on the set or something, it's like, okay, in three, two, one, pull. It, it, what if you don't pull it in time? Right. It's and just, I think that's where most of the injuries come from. It's it's like, yes. Just, ow. Yeah. Fucking so that means ow. if some guy slips when pulling the rope, you just took a sink to the face. <laughs> right. <laughs> Even if it's not real porcelain, it's like that it's still a thing. It's not cardboard. You know the most terrifying Okay, the most Here, here's the most psychologically fucked up thing about it. If you're a stunt man and somebody doesn't pull that on time, and you're a fan of the actor. Like, I like Matt Damon. I wouldn't call Matt Damon my hero. But, like, can you imagine just having your shit rocked by Matt Damon on accident? But that's just it. There, there are two <laughs> your kinds face of is just scarred up, and it's like, Matt Damon did this. There are two kinds of people. There's well, not the, even that. That's just the horror. Like, oh, God, you're such a cool... Oh! There are two kinds of people, though. You're going to end up with a person that's like, I got my shit rocked by Matt Damon. I'm never working on Or it's going to be like, oh, my God. Shit right, by Matt Damon. and I feel like both of them are often the ones in like stuff. So, like I trusted you. Yeah, like, <laughs> I looked up to you. I put my faith in you. Yeah, I thought it's you were a, good. It's okay, Mr. Damon. My wife weeped when she saw me. <laughs> like, but no, like okay, like the other thing too though is like I was watching one where it showed a stunt man. He's like, here's how easy it is to get hit by a car. Literally, a car, a real life car is just speeding at him, Jump. and he just he just slightly jumped and he took his back and he hit that. And he just leapt off like a kid. And then he's just like, oh. And that was it. It's no big deal. You know, I tried that once. I almost died. Right. You know the scariest thing that I've ever heard is it was from The Dark Knight. The scene where Joker slams that dude in the pencil. Mm -hmm. Yes. He actually was slamming his head into the table. Yeah. Like, getting knocked out. And he had to actually move the pencil himself. Oh. Yeah. So if he didn't move that pencil in time... Heath Ledger would slam his head. Just straight murder him. Murder him. <laughs> Holy Apparently fuck. it was off camera. Right at the last second he'd pull the pencil. Right before he literally smacked his face. Can we just take a moment and just address even- He got knocked out three times. <laughs> even just that scene alone. Or two. Ju- two times. Ju- just the smack like it's mad gone. Yeah. And you're just like what the literal fuck just happened with this? Like, the, the, the insanity- that is, or that was that character and oh was God. that performance is just fucking bo- mind boggling. That's the thing that gets me. It's like, what in the fuck? Right. Like, I don't know. Like, I'm just surprised that was even allowed, to tell you yeah. the truth. Like, being that much of like a slight slip and you're dead. Yep. I mean, here's the, it's just the filmmaking in general, the amount of, everyone's like, oh my God, they have these multi billion dollar budgets or million dollar budgets and all this other kind of stuff. But it's like, the amount of times you hear about, like, shit being rather ghetto, you're like, right. What? Right. Like, seriously? This Wait, is a thing? This is what's holding up everybody is this little teeny ring. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, we need we need it to be able to break away easily. Like, okay, but what? Is there such a thing as too easily? My keychain's bigger. <laughs> 
Like, I can break my keychain. Why do we need something right? smaller than like, that? This this is not safe. Like, <laughs> but no. Well, you know, honestly, I think my biggest lesson with that was when I was watching MythBusters as a kid. Okay. And you know how those two always like they used to work in the background magic of oh, like yeah. the watching that, and then you always like I loved watching MythBusters because they'd explain some cool behind the scenes movie magic. Oh yeah. And you're like that was that was it. Like that was the thing that shocked me. Is like sometimes the simplest shit was like oh. I Again, mean, multi-million dollar budgets, and you used a firecracker? See, the thing that gets me... <laughs> a here's 20 what cent fucking firecracker? I, I'm taking I'm taking my stand, and I don't care. You know what bugs me? When you hear a movie costs, like, $700 million to produce, you're like, okay, $600 million of that went to paying the actors. Correct. Mm. You know, so you have a team of, like, 40 people with, like, $20,000 to make <laughs> movie magic. <laughs> and then this yep. pompous prick is sitting here eating ham. Making $120 million. I don't know. But then it's like the flip side. You I have... should say pompous prick. They are usually nice people. But it's like then on the flip side, you have people like Keanu Reeves that like you have footage of him on the See, John Wick set yeah. where it's like it was downpouring and set people were like rushing to grab gear and fucking Keanu goes out there and he's grabbing gear, soaking right. wet and hauling it back too. And it's yeah, like... that's why I was like, I shouldn't shit on all of them. I'm just, yeah. And, I mean, Keanu is something special to begin he's with. He's a unique one. He, he really like, is. Dude, he took all of his Matrix they, profits yeah, for charity. He donate most and, of like, his salaries. What, wait, was the Matrix one charity, or was that the one where he gave all the crew like huge bonuses? I don't know, to be honest with you. Ah, dude, so, I, I, I something did, like that. I heard a similar story. I just don't recall exactly which yeah, one it was. No, but there's a point in time where he always takes money, and he always apparently he'd always show up with coffee and donuts for the crew, yep. and it's like... That's a genuinely good person. He's a wholesome fucking dude, but it's like, and at the same time, he's a he's a really fucking hard worker. Oh, I mean, yeah. you look at the the behind the scenes stuff that he did for John Wick because it became so mainstream, right? But like, he'd be at Terran Tactical and like the drills that he ran to like be familiar with the guns and the reload and the the legit accuracy of the guns that he was using is dumb oh my god i, I mean like have you seen those terran tactical oh videos? my god yeah dude i was just gonna say i loved it when um i just actually watched john wick too and i loved it when he was like actually checking like a gun that was known for jamming if it was jamming constantly yep. and it was like so cool because i'm like that gun's and i didn't realize this till i watched one of those youtube videos explaining like all the behind the scenes cool yeah. little easter egg shit it's like you want to know why he was checking this gun right here cuz this type of gun is known for jamming so yep. he was consistently checking it and like this one he reloaded with his pinky cuz you can do this and it's this style and it was like he was actually explaining the techniques and stuff so whoever the fuck the guy is who did the gun design and the arsenal oh yeah. knows his shit the like the gunplay in those movies will forever in my opinion be unmatched i mean it, it's just fucking ridiculous yeah. the the it, it's just purely unmatched in every possible way right and honestly like oh god i don't know so i just look at it it's just like just knowing what this gun's known for its flaws and how he tactically used it yep and handled it, and I don't know. It was just, it's. I forgot how well those movies were, so rewatching them, I was like, fucking A. <laughs> I think what almost blows my mind a little bit more than the gunplay and, like, the choreography and whatnot is when you get the the car people that will do shit with cars. Right. I mean, that stuff is fucking stupid. You sit there and just drift around about at a perfect 90 degree angle within inches of shit. And I'm, I'm just, it's, that blows my mind. See, okay. Like, I like to think my... I'm a good driver, but fuck. Dude, Fast and Furious. Bringing yes. this up. Like, dude, the first four or five were like, okay, if you're an actual car person, this is like, I mean, a little far-fetched, but this is like your shit. It's doable. Yeah. It's doable. But, like, especially, like, Tokyo Drift with the drifting styles and the tire. It was, yeah, like, you know. Absolutely. It, that movie got a lot of shit when it was first came out. But then it's, like, it's like the Star Wars movies. What people looking back are, like, okay, yeah, no, those are actually I actually good. thoroughly enjoyed Tokyo Drift. I did, too. And it got a bunch of shit. And I don't understand why. But whatever. People suck. It's because of Lil Bow Wow. Yeah. It's 100%. <laughs> God. I watched Tokyo Drift once. Yeah? Yeah. Did you love it? I know. Just mediocre. 
the big credit that I've got to give to actors and, and of all kind, but when it's specifically the one that comes to mind is Star Wars and like Ruddy Player One, is the guys that don't get to work with practical sets. Mm, right. Like when you work in a film like Ready Player One and everything is green screen, you have got to take your imagination to a whole nother level. But I think that back to what you said before about like imagination. the imagination. Oh God, Chris. Is uh, your camera even on? No, not at all. Okay. <laughs> Uh, like you go back to like the entertainment value for the actors. It's like you can sit here and you can look at concept art and you can be told a million different things and how you're going to interact with this and all that other kind of stuff. And you do your whole performance based on that. And then in post, you see how that actually looks and what you actually were interacting mm -hmm. with. Yeah. That's got to be a degree of a mind fuck where you're just like, what the? Yeah. Well, dude, you ever see like even like spit back to The Hobbit, for example? Oh, yeah. The Hobbit, uh, whatever, the smog one. Yep. Fucking that scene where like the dragon's coming down and ben Benedict Cumberpatch is just being all weird. Like you have to be acting while Benedict Cumberpatch is on all fours. Oh, the snarling the the at you. The behind like, the scenes of smog. That yeah. was shit was funny. Yep. That was that oh was fucking God. hilarious. So yeah, and the desolation of I don't know. It was just like what you? How do you keep a straight face? Right. You know you I'll have Benedict Cumberpatch in like a latex suit, <laughs> full of dots. Try to try snarling to, at you. Try to imagine taking Andy Circus seriously. No, dude, right? <laughs> like, like, well, and like credit to um, another actor I think is kind of underrated is Martin Freeman. I feel like he's really underrated. He's the one that did Bilbo, and then he did. Oh yeah, oh, he has a really good show. He yeah, did, he is really he good. He did Bilbo. He was in uh, Black Panther. Yep. Yeah. Um, what else is? Oh, he was. Um, he's done a lot of shit. Yeah, he was in Sherlock Holmes. Yes, he's yeah. um, Watson in Sherlock yeah. Holmes. Yep. But really good actor. Really like him. Dude, well, there's sure. some actors that are just like you. Kind of like they don't get the credit they deserve because they take very difficult roles. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's there's like celebrity star actors that are like you're good looking, so get in here. Well, then the, there's yeah, like the deep seated like, oh, you're committed. Yeah, like Ian McKellen Who, and yeah, it's just that's the guy from um, Ian McKellen is Gandalf. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Wow. Magneto. No, who was I thinking of? Um, <laughs> who's the guy from There Will Be Blood? Daniel Day Lewis. Mm. Oh, dude, mm. that's one of those guys who just does not break character. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like. Yeah. I feel like it'd be really weird hanging around method actors, though. Dude, I know, but there's something like when he was in Gangs of New York, apparently he was just a full asshole, and he would, like, be in his hotel room throwing knives. Like, he just did not break character. Damn. So he was, like, that asshole. Just uh, damn. That, I just, yeah. damn. No, literally, he had a piece of wood in his hotel room, and he would just practice throwing knives all day at it. And it was just, Yeah. Just what he did, huh? I even think he, like, took butchering classes. Like, dude's a method actor. Method. That's fucking gnarly. So weird. Yeah. I, my biggest concern with method acting, I guess, is, like, the state of total immersion you go into is, like, I don't know. I always feel like it's a dangerous game. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you pull uh, yourself back. Y you get a lot of actors that have suffered from that. I mean, Heath Ledger. Mm. Yeah. Right? I mean, you talk about a character that you maybe really didn't or shouldn't have method acted into. And it was probably Joker, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, it, it, again, great actor, great performance. It's, it's sad what happened, man, but that's, that's a really good I mean, example. Jack of the Nicholson warned him about that role. Yeah. Too, didn't even. he? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, careful kid. It can be kind of intense. Yeah. That's, that's insane. I think he actually said all consuming. Yeah. Yeah. It was something like that. It, yeah, it's like you said. It it's a dangerous game to try and pull yourself back out of. I'm falling into yeah, nothing. I was like, "What the I hell's going on?" I broke there, physics over here. Hold yeah. on, you can do it. <laughs> well, while Chris I started himself... going up like that, <laughs> like... it's pulling me to the singularity. <laughs> While Chris goes ahead and pulls himself back together, we're going to go ahead and pull this episode to a wrap here, guys. Thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Until next time, peace out.